group of Berlinale Talents, a warm welcome to this afternoon's session, High in the North, new Finnish series. Um, the uh, panel is now in cooperation also with Medium Board Berlin Brandenburg and um, the panelists within the drama series days. We are doing the series uh, days together also with our colleagues from Berlinale series and also with Berlinale co-production market and the European film market. And uh, why is the Berlinale doing uh, also open the door to series? Because we are all addicted to series since a, a couple of years also. And also to open um, formats uh, in direction, not only for TV or cinema, also um, that you can have easily access uh, to online series in the web. And uh, we would, uh, we found two interesting cases uh, in high in the north, and uh, yeah, I will give the mic to Alison Norrington, and uh, she will introduce you to this nice panelist. So have uh, have a nice chat here with the uh, co colleagues from the north here. Yeah. Thank you, Christine. Okay, so there's some names I'm not very good at pronouncing here. However, I will try, just with first names, okay? So first I would thank you for coming as a first thing um, and to Berlinale Talents for asking us to do this. So I'd like to introduce Max and Alexi, both of whom are responsible for Nerd Dragon Slayer 666. And I would also like to introduce Heike and Miko. They're the surnames I can't say who are responsible for this series, Donna. So I'd like to ask, before I go any further, have any of you had the chance to see any of the episodes of these series? Okay, some of you have. <laughs> and our job here is done. Um, so I think what we'll do, first of all, is we'll show a clip from Nerd Dragon Slayer 666. Do people call it that or do they just call it Nerd? Okay, okay. So if we could just show a, a short clip from that and a short clip from Donna, just to give some context. Um, but what I'd also like to say is, as we go through, there's two things always with panels that I think. One is when we talk about story, but nobody knows how to tell one. And the other is, especially for you guys with Dragon Slayer, uh, interaction, but then we don't ask any questions, right? So. We'll stop throughout a few times and, you know, rather than try and save it all up till the end, there might be questions that you just want to fire across. And we do have a throwable cube mic up there, which one of Max's friends apparently designed. Um, so we can take questions as we go. But I think just to begin, if we could please show the first clip. Thank you. Kui jopaman perse? Me ei nyt helvettiin siitä. Toi kone tuhoaa sun elämässä. Sä tuhoat mun elämän. Satanan diktaattori. Et viestä mihkään. Et viestä mihkään. Excellent. That's the uh, the definition of being devastated, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so just as a quick intro, if you could um, 
tell us what your roles are around NERD. So uh, I'm a writer and director of this show, and this is for a producer. And uh, yeah, it, uh, as, you, as you saw, it's uh, pretty devastating. I mean, there's a guy who wants to be a professional gamer, and his dream is to win in Yen Chöping a tournament like as being the best Counter-Strike counter uh, player. And in the beginning of the TV show, like in the first episode, uh, his mom is not that supportive in this sport. <laughs> oh, <laughs> poor him. <laughs> um, am I right in thinking it was developed from a book that you wrote? Yes, uh, originally it was actually 10 years ago I, I did a YouTube video of my friend who's uh, playing a lot and his internet nick was like Dragon Slayer 666 oh. and it be uh, became a huge hit but then he had to go to the uh, Finnish military and we couldn't do any more videos but then since because uh, the fans, fans were asking more I decided to write a book about his life. And for me, it was interesting because usually gamers, they don't have any time to watch TV or uh, let's not speak about like uh, reading books. This time, you know, when the subject is about gaming and, uh, and a guy who is like an anti-hero for these gamers, then they really found time for reading book. So <laughs> there I had a like business idea. Okay, if they are ready to read a book, about gaming, probably they would see a TV show about that subject <laughs> Definitely. too. Definitely. Are you a gamer? I used to be, but I suck at it so much, so I decided to concentrate on filmmaking. <laughs> Good idea. And how did you come to the project, Max? So, um, around four years ago, um, Alexi brought uh, a movie script called Nerd Dragon Slayer 666 to the company Dionysus Films. And we developed the script together for a couple of years and tried to get it financed. And all the financiers were saying it's wonderful. Uh, it's exactly for the target audience that we want. And we love the script. It's funny. It's just too bad there's playing. There's gaming in it. Nobody <laughs> wants to watch gamers. Nobody <laughs> wants to watch esports. So this is difficult for us. <laughs> and then we found a commissioner who, who suggested how about a... Uh, series format and this could be something that's actually more interesting for your target audience and we realized that she was absolutely right and uh, it was after that a very quick process actually to to change the script into eight times 12 minutes um, TV series which mm. is this first season so it now um, launches, it's launched on YLE's streaming service, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay, and is that the only place that it can be found? Um, actually, YLE um, had a very good uh, release strategy. They uh, had the release date for their online platform in the beginning of October, this 2017. And one day before the release date, um, they kind of through the main character's YouTube channel, leaked the first episode on YouTube. Excellent. And uh, it got a lot of views in YouTube, and then there you had the link to see the rest of the episodes on the online platform. Brilliant. And I'm going to talk to you about that a little bit more, because that, that kind of idea of seeding it out there and letting people find it, that's a huge strategy. But before we do that, let's see a clip of Donna, if that's okay. Could we roll the second clip? Wow, that is the ilmast key. Wow. <laughs> Madonna. Hey, Herman. Terve. Me asutaan aika lähekkäin. Mä oon usein nähnyt sut. Ai jaa. Pitiks sun ostaa jotain punasta tai valkosta? Joo, joku vähän parempi. Ranskalainen pitäis saada. Tässähän on punasta, eiks niin? Pystytkö sä haistaa sen tai jotain? Pystyn. Punkut ei oo täällä päinkään. Tää on ihan epistä, jos sä katoilet koko ajan. 
Tämä vuosi on siis niin yliarvostettu. No otetaanko sitten tätä toista? Je te nyt Joo, se on parempi. Vähän monimutkainen, mutta tohin tää on ihan jees. Onko se niin, että kun yksi aisti puuttuu, niin muut on sit herkempiä? No, mulla ainakin. Muista näkkäreistä mä en tiedä. Niin näkövämmäisistä. No jos mäkin otan sit tätä. Ja. Kiitos vinkistä. Mennään jo, mulla on kiire. Oli hauska tavata. Hei. Hei. Otetaan kolme. Tota. Minkä näköinen se oli? Vanhan. Mitä kuinka vanha? No, vielä vanha kuin sä. Se oli kiinnostunut musta. Oli vaan kohtelias vammas. Se puhuu mulle kuin naiselle, ei näkkärille. Yeah, right. Minne se meni? On tonne markettiin. Kun minne päin, kerro. Sä oot mulla töissä, kerro. Se meni jo. Lähellä. Se asiassa tiedän. Kiitos. Hei, jos mulla on basilikaa hampaiden välistä tai keittoa leualla, niin sano sit vaan. Joo, mä sanon. Monet näkkärit ei tykkää syödä julkisesti, kun se voi välillä olla vähän sattasta. Ai niin, maista taas. Nää tuo itse tätä maa. <tos> no ei kannattais kyllä. Säpä oot tarkka viineistäs. Hän no. on aika vähän semmoisia juttuja, missä mä oon hyvä, mutta tässä mä oon. Tää oli alun perin mun miehen harrastus, tai eiks miehen? Väristä viskositeetistä mä en tosin pysty sanoa yhtään mitään. No, mun ex-vaimo erotti just ja just puna- ja valkoviini toisistaan. Ai säkin oot? Joo. Ai... Ei. Kato, kun mä en näe, niin mun tarvitsee aina puhua suoraan. Ja mä kyllä kuulen sun äänestä, että sä et oo sarjamurhaaja. <laughs> ja sun partavesi on ihan ok, niin onks sus jotain vikaa? Miksi te erositte? No mä en kuulemma ollutkaan se oikein. So, okay, first of all, what are your roles? Are you both co-writers? How did this come to be? Well, um, Heki is the director, I'm the head writer, and he's the co-writer, so... Uh, okay. And was it your idea? Did you come up with this concept? No, you tell him. Yeah, actually, it was my idea. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. He's uh, the blind one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's something, uh, something uh, quite personal in, <coughs> in the beginning. I, uh, well, no, I can tell it now. <laughs> I, I thought I was uh, living in a happy relationship. Then one day, suddenly, I woke up and uh, and my wife has left. Okay. So I fell in, uh, in into a dark, into a darkness, and uh, uh, thinking myself, uh, was I uh, an idiot or blind or both? <laughs> Before you go any further, we've all been no, there. We've no. all been there, right? And uh, you, you know, and we've seen so many series about divorce, and you know, we didn't didn't want to repeat that. So, yeah. so. Uh, so, how did Donna like from that experience? Where did you find Donna, like in your head? I don't know. Maybe there's a skinny young woman inside me. <laughs> so you are really Donna, right? <laughs> yeah. Because um, it's quite an unconventional romantic comedy, isn't it? But it's also very honest. And 
her as a character, it kind of blasts a lot of the preconceived ideas, perhaps, around what it would be like to live as she calls a blindy, right? Yeah. Uh, well, he has, she has courage. Uh, she's openly sexual. And uh, like all the women in Scandinavia, she does, does what she wants. <laughs> Even well, she's if, a bad if thing. Even <laughs> she's blind. Okay. And uh, her impairment is not uh, pitied. Uh, he, we, she, she uh, is very active, and uh, we, we are not laughing at her impairment. No. We, we might laugh that sometimes she thinks a little bit too much about her abilities. Yeah. And that's, that's where we laugh. But there is a lot of courage in there, like the way she runs yeah, with she, that stick. You yeah, know she mean? can go to the bar and say, say to a guy, an ice hockey player, I want to bang you. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, but like she said, because she can't see, she just talks very straight, right? Yeah. So, like, have like you two saw. worked together before? Like, how did you both come to, together on the project? Well, uh, I think the point is that nobody is interested in, in middle-aged man who is divorced. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and um, actually we wrote this uh, for a certain uh, actress, a friend of ours. Uh, she's like in her 40s. And, um, and then, uh, but uh, the commissioning editor at YLE immediately told us that must be younger because of the, their target audience must be under 30 or something. And then we, <coughs> we had to tell our friend that, uh, okay, I mean, she was attached to this project. So we mm -hmm. had to tell that, sorry, honey, you're too old. Oh, great. Uh, you can, you can <laughs> imagine how, how that, that feels. <laughs> yeah, she's 40, beautiful, uh, you're too old. <laughs> yeah. But that, that, that's the name of the game. Of course. And, and she knew it too. So, um, but, um, so from that conversation with Wiley, did you then have quite a clear idea who your audience were? The fact they wanted that lead actress to be younger? Yeah, that was given to us, really. Yeah. So did you adapt the story or the script then uh, because you were going for a younger yeah, audience? Yeah, yeah, we had, yeah. So what kinds of changes did you make? Well, I think it was easier because it, it's not so big difference, you know, be being, you know, 38 or 28. But, but of course, it was a challenge because we are not female and we are not blind. So <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to do. But luckily, we got a female producer. Hi, Lisa. Lisa is here. Yeah. here. Uh, yeah. Okay, hello. And, and also, we have <laughs> this great cast. And, and young women, uh, they are very uh, intelligent, active, and they, so yeah. we, are, we were not alone, of course. Yeah. But um, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not the easiest one to write. Yeah. I mean, because <laughs> we had to me meet a lot of uh, blind people, of course. Lots of interviews with blind people, of course, yeah. Was you going to add something then? Yeah, I think the, uh, when the script was almost finished, we had uh, meetings with the actors, actresses, and I, I, I really enjoyed working with them because they were so, uh, uh, you know, witty, and, uh, and <laughs> they, they took the piece for themselves. So mm. it was easy, easy to, to make it. So in terms of like the differences in audiences, I mean, you're clearly, you almost had a built-in audience, right? Because you knew you were going for the gamer community really how did you start to engage with that audience and when did you do that was that part of like your development well, process or uh, I have a like a lot of background on YouTube and I've also been uh, communicating with my fans through YouTube like mm -hmm. and you know especially gamers uh, teenage gamers they're really ruthless <laughs> when it comes to the <laughs> commenting on YouTube yeah so uh, I had a good experience on them, mm -hmm. and I think the main thing is to think not only what they want, mm -hmm. but what they need to see. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, I mean, they want to see gaming, they, they want to see uh, a guy who is a superstar in gaming, but mm -hmm. they need to see 
a guy who can't show their his emotions and le is learning to do that. Mm -hmm. So I think we had a really good balance on this show. Like it's not only for gamers. I've heard that a lot of uh, adults, non-gaming people, has enjoyed the show as well. So mm -hmm. it's important to do what they want, but not serve only that purpose. So how did you determine the difference between what you felt your audience wanted and then what you extracted from what you felt they needed? Was that like a conversation through social media? Like how did you do your research on your audience? Oh yeah, account? well, it's basically testing. Okay. I mean, I've, I've uh, uploaded many videos on YouTube and I can tell from the bar barometers when I lose the audience, when at what, what time they stop watching it and, and uh, by comments what they want, what they need. And, but I haven't asked really. Okay. Like it's all, all, only by experience. So it's only really from you creating content and looking at the data and the analytics of what was picking up and what was dropping off. Yes. Right? So you never went in and said, I'm doing this thing. It was all, always, always, sorry, like you listening back rather than actively asking questions. Uh, yeah, because I've noticed that they don't really know, uh, they don't really know what they want. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If I ask them what, what do they That's want, true. they say action and gaming. Yeah. Love? No, not love. Yeah. But they still enjoy love yeah, stories of course. secretly. <laughs> so from the story of Dragon Slayer, I've got here the story of 19-year-old gamer Dragon Slayer 666, whose mum destroys his computer. To realise his dream of becoming a professional player, he's forced to step out of his room, face the real world, and learn about the meaning of friendship and teamwork. So how does that happen for him? Because that's really out of his comfort zone. Yeah, well, it's a Counter-Strike is a team game. You, you need five players to, to play the game. And you can't really do just your own stuff. You will lose that way. So you have to learn to communicate. And in order to have a team, he has to be a nice guy. I mean, who wants to play with a dickhead? Yeah. So that's what he's learning through through the series. Okay. And, and we have different kind of characters in the show. Like there's a, his sidekick called Mega Man, mm -hmm. who is really like open to emotions and really vulnerable. Probably the opposite of Dragon Slayer. Mm -hmm. So uh, I guess through him he is learning some of these abilities that pro gamer actually really needs. Yeah, right, okay. So how much of that process were you involved in, Max, in terms of like listening back to the audience and looking at analytics? Did you get involved in any of that? Well, I have to say that from the development point of view, I consider myself the audience. Good, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Alexi writes and I read and I tell him if I feel something or don't feel Brilliant. something. Okay. So I think it's difficult to, to make some kind of um, uh, clear algorithmic mm -hmm. system to calculate um, the emotions of a teenage audience. I think if um, you have a hu human reaction to the story and it grips you and it moves you and it mm -hmm. uh, makes you laugh and it makes you interested, then it works mm -hmm. and how it's then marketed to those audiences is a different issue and I think Wiley with their transmedia team uh, with whom Alexi also collaborated to make sure that the, that it's true to the characters that it's true to the story I think they succeeded very very well but yeah because everybody's going crazy about NRK's scam right um, the amounts of conversations I've heard across a series of different networks that are trying to replicate that idea did you come across that with Dragon Slayer? Kind of, because the original Dragon Slayer was on YouTube already. So when we um, like remake this story, I think it was a good combo to have also like this character, even though he was a fictional character, to make YouTube videos as he was a real person, mm -hmm. and also like gaming videos and streaming videos. Because uh, everybody wants to see a character story. If they don't care about the character, they, they don't care about the story at all. So uh, that ma marketing strategy was really good for, th for mm -hmm. that purpose. And I think both in this case, in our case and in, with SCUM, um, what seems to work is that both the, the transmedia things and the series can stand on their own two feet. Mm -hmm. So they're not in a way dependable on, e on each other. 
they, they complete, I mean, they, they complement each other, but you're not dependent on one for the other to enjoy or understand the other. So, yeah. so we had a, actually a lot of conversations of how many uh, times do we have to somehow uh, put a clue into the series that there is some content on YouTube or on some other media, and we decided that we want to minimize that because we want an audience who enjoys series to just enjoy the series and know that that the story is complete and whole, mm -hmm. and and if they then go on YouTube and find the videos, that's something extra that they okay. can enjoy. It's like a it's like a surprise. It's like a gift, and and then on the other other side, the the character. I mean, the the people that found the main character on YouTube, when they hear, oh, there's also a TV series about mm -hmm. him. It's also a nice extra. Yeah, and and it's maybe. If the marketing works, then they will come yeah. into the fictional story so as well. So was there new original content created for YouTube for this, in addition to your main story arc of your series? Yeah, basically, yeah. And was that your strategy or your concept, or was that what came in from YLE's like transmedia Well, because um, I, I, I have the YouTube background, so and my dream is to become a filmmaker. So I wanted just to do a, like a future film in the movie theaters, the old traditional way. But, uh, but then YLE was really supporting, like, hey, we have to have the YouTube too. Like, you're an expert on that field, keep it with it. Okay. And I guess it's, a, it's answers to two different needs. Mm -hmm. I mean, YouTube is really fast paced. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't really watch anything that's slow or boring. Mm -hmm. And then in the series, you can really slow down. Yeah. And I think, even though they say that nobody can concentrate on anything anymore, uh, that's what they need. They need to have story that they can spend a lot of time with to calm down with the character and really uh, learn to know that character. Yeah. But the YouTube videos, they are only hook for the series. That's true. So how many episodes of um, Nerd and how long are they? Uh, it's uh, eight episodes and it's approximately 12 minutes per okay. episode. Okay. And on the back of that, are you thinking of like doing like a season two or something? Yeah, we are actually, uh, I'm already writing it. Oh, really? And okay. we are supposed to start the shootings on May. Oh, wow, nice. Yeah, so um, seasons two and three have been commissioned already. And wow, lovely, well yeah. done, that's good to hear. So in terms of you guys and Donna, is, am I right, I've got here 10 lots of 25 minutes. Um, were there any strategies around Donna that uh, happened out on social media in order to attract audiences? How can people find the story of Donna away from the main series? Yeah. Well, uh, that's actually not our department. It's, it's why it edited, uh, of course, all the distribution and our producer. So, uh, of course, there was they had some social media strategy, of, of course. Mm -hmm. But uh, <coughs> our series is basically quite traditional comedy structure and ev everything. So, so it's just additional. It, it's not in the series there's there's nothing like okay. of course we have uh, <coughs> the blind our blind main character using like they are using their iPhones they are kind of they are really clever at using those devices these days they can do anything and mm -hmm. they can text you with you know at lightning speed and no typos it's, it's wow, amazing really? and, and we, we did in the series we didn't want to concentrate on on her uh, blindness so we kind of wanted to just show that uh, we, d we didn't want to concentrate on the, on the technical details how the blind person uh, how, how the, they are dealing with but uh, she just uh, there's just acts acts all the time and uh, like us hmm. uh, so uh, in, in that sense the, all this modern technology was kind of present from the start because okay. that's what uh, at least younger blindies do. Mm. They really use use this a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, because whenever she's, there was a scene I'd looked at right in the first episode and she picks up her phone and I don't know, she kind of taps it to yeah. get to her friend. And then she turns her phone around and she says, where am I? And the friend says, well, there's two or three bicycles in front of you, but if you take two steps to the right, you're good. And she goes, okay, but she still gets it wrong and falls over, right? Yeah, yeah. But um, I loved how like you brought that in, 
you know, the idea that she can just use her phone and she's, her friend is there all the time to yeah, yeah. times when she's stuck to show her where to go and what to do. Yeah, yeah. And we, we try not to laugh at, at uh, her blindness, but that's why we made her kind of over, overconfident so we can laugh at that when she falls. Yeah. She kind of thinks that she has some super senses. Yeah, she's uh, very confident. Yeah. She thinks she can do way more than yeah. she can do. Yeah. And you're right, you don't ever laugh at the blindness. Yeah. You laugh with her, but yeah. you never laugh at her. Yeah. And if you do laugh at her, she's laughing at herself as well. Yeah, yeah. So it's really elegantly done, I think, that there's never Thank a you. moment yeah. that you feel that you're laughing at, at yeah. that point. It was really nicely done, yeah. yeah. I think uh, our, our series is quite conventional in ma matter of doing comedy. I, I don't think there are any secrets in making comedy. You have to stress embarrassment it's to its limits. You have to exaggerate, be politically incorrect. That's making comedy. Of course. But if there's something fresh and something which uh, is breaking the cliches of uh, its genre, it's, it's the main character. Yeah. Uh, because, we, uh, you know, with the main character, you can see the situations a little bit differently. The also, fami familiar situations seems to li look a li little bit awkward mm -hmm. when she's, she's going in them. Yeah, I think that comes out really well. Yeah. I just wonder, as we're at this point, if there's any questions so we can throw the microphone at anybody. Do you have any questions? No? Okay. In that case, I think we'll take a look at the second clip from Nerd. So if you could roll the, the, uh, the third one we have, please. Ei toi bulbiksen siemen syöksy oikein tuottanutkaan damagea. Ei ku Obama ja Pinokkeen kanssa. Huonosti. Ei jumala, mitä paska. Megaman, voiks mä kans soittaa jotain? Megaman, tuu pois sieltä. Siitä. Kiitos. Megaman. Slayer 666, in the case of Jonne, he is a nitty. He is a slayer. 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 He is a he loves computer games and huge hey man. Doesn't care about girls. All he needs computer hardware and keyboard too. Nyt loppu tää musikaali perseily. Tajuut sä, et mä voisin haastaa sut oikeuteen mun korvien raiskauksesta. Hey. I'm Dragon Slayer. Se on Hanna. Dragon Slayer 666. Sano sille kaverille, ettei puutu mun seksielämää. Oh. <laughs> and if we keep the lights down, we'll just see another clip of um, Donna, please. Onko se Oskari täällä? 
Pyydä se tänne. Missä se Björkman on? Ah, no sieltä se sun fantomis nyt tulee tänne päin. Huom, varattu fantom. Mä haan meillä nyt vuoli, älä tee mitään tyhmää. Moi. Hello, my name is Ryan Gosling. <laughs> Okei. Okay. Mä oon joku Kim tai joku. Sä oot Kanye West. Okei. Okay. Tota, mites Ryanin ilta on lähtenyt käyntiin? Mä oon vetänyt ihan matalaa profiilia. Ah, ah siksi kun sä oot varattu. Mut ei se oo mikään este, se on hidaste. Esteen voi aina kiertää. Mä en koskaan kierrä esteitä, mä menen niiden ali. <laughs> Onpas. Ei vaan Mendesin kanssa, mutta se pettää mua Batmanin kanssa. Eikö oikeesti? Sitku. Tyttöystävä lähti puoli vuotta sitten. Ai, ouch. Mira, sä oot mun lempiopettaja. Sä et oo kyllä yhtään mun tyyppiä. Sori. Tää sun kaveri mua vois kyllä kiinnostaa. <tä> tai siis jos mä oisin homo. Onks mä mies? Oot, ei ihan sairaan ruma. <tä> tässä on siis mun näkövammainen ystävä Donna ja Björkman tässä on... <tä> Sokea ja kääpiö. <tä> Ryan, kippistä sille. <tä> Kippis, Kanye Kultaseni! <laughs> okay, so in terms of how you both got to get into YLE and what kind of um, discussions you had, can we maybe go through that? Because, I mean, short form series is a thing and of course the scam model is driving everyone crazy. Um, but I just wondered, I mean, when we were introduced by Christina, she said, you know, we're looking more at series now in this session than film. How did you get from having the concept of your idea, maybe I'll ask you first, from the concept to actually getting into the doors at YLE? Did they come to you? Did you go to them? Uh, we went together to them. Okay. And we were presenting the idea. And, uh, well, they started to give uh, money uh, you know, first quite little, then a little bit more. <laughs> then they feed it us. Okay. And uh, we were riding together. And, uh, and then we were in the moment that uh, they should do the decision, and then we were waiting the decision quite long. And uh, finally, we are here. Excellent. And in terms of your producer, was she on your team at the beginning? Like, was it the three of you? And actually, no, we, we started, uh, our team was me and Mikko okay. at, at the first place. But, uh, and Liz joined us a uh, couple of years later. Okay, so you say a couple of years later. How long ago did this concept come up? What is, uh, uh, when? When did you have the first idea for well, Donald? Uh, like six years ago, five years ago. Maybe oh, well, six really? ago. But of course, I have to say it was easier to us uh, because uh, they knew us. We have been doing these things for 20, 30 years. So, and, and we have both been working at YLE, so it, it, there was no barrier like that. It was okay. just the content. So they, they could trust that we can deliver maybe. But uh, so it kind of, it was easier to, for us. But, um, but of course, because our main character is, is uh, quite unusual, so we just have to have to make sure with YLE2 in development that uh, we don't want her to be scary. 
I mean, it's a scary thing to be blind. So uh, that's why it kind of, um, we had, when we were choosing our DP, maybe you can tell about that. I mean. Yeah, the world is not, not so very frightening when we yeah. see the f uh, finished uh, TV series. Uh, I think uh, sometimes it uh, looks like, more, like, more, more like an advertisement. Yeah, the commercial, well, because we, we chose a DP yeah. who has been doing a lot of commercial stuff and all this kind of lightning and, and costume design. Everything is in purpose. We, we don't want it to be kind of well, scary. Mm -hmm. Because that was the only way to try to uh, just to... Uh, it's not e easy to root for somebody if, if you don't understand what was the... And that's why uh, our main, main character is not born blind, because that's really another other case. If you're born blind, then it's kind of, you don't even know what you are not seeing. Mm -hmm. But our main character lost uh, her vision like, like uh, seven years ago, so, so it's easier for us to emphasize with, with her. And in terms of uh, your audience, have you got any feedback or any data on reviews or who your audiences are? Is there any, I mean, there must be conversation around the series. It's the, the kind of story that would make people talk. Yeah, I, I think we have got good response. And in the net, uh, in the net, in Ule Arena, it's very, fam uh, uh, very successful. Mm -hmm. And uh, well, the best, uh, response for me is that I heard that in there's a, there's a uh, page in Facebook called Women's Room in Finland that, and pe people there are recommending this to each other so maybe okay so they're talking about it of course they yeah. would do right okay so in terms of Dragon Slayer how did you guys come to Wiley how did that moment happen so we had been already talking with Wiley with the future film commissioners for a couple of years. About this show? About the film, okay, about the course. feature script. Yep. But the end result of the series is not very different from the final draft of the feature film oh, really? uh, script. It was split into eight quite easily. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened was, since we were all the time running into challenges with the film, um, financiers because of the, um, I guess, the fear that it won't find its audience as a film. Um, we were lucky that uh, inside of YLE there was uh, a producer who heard about uh, this project that was in development and she had read uh, Alex's books. So she knew already about the characters. So this is, the series is not a direct adaptation of any of the books, but it has all of the same characters. And uh, straight away, she, she contacted us and, and we, we uh, modified the script to be in series format. And then from there, it was six months later, we started shooting. Wow, okay. And I, I just want to tell that if there's any writers there who struggle with this kind of miniseries, eight episodes, because I mean 12 minutes per episode, it's a challenging uh, structure. Yeah. So basically, when I turned the future film script to this one, I didn't really make any my major changes. So, and now when I'm planning the second season, I'm really just trying to have a future film structure with small cliffhangers there and there, so. So as you're writing the second season now, you're more mindful of the format, right? That you kind of set up and pay off and yes. leave it with cliffhangers, which you wouldn't do so much if it was written as a feature script. Exactly, and that can be challenging too, and also I try not to concentrate too much on cliffhangers. Yeah. I think they're a bit old-fashioned mm -hmm. in a way that we don't have commercial breaks. Mm -hmm. We have it like all the episodes straight on Yle Arena, Wiley. Yeah. So usually if some kid start to watch something, they want to see the whole story. Mm -hmm. And as long as there's strong emotion that the audience can follow, they want to know what happens next. Yeah. We don't need big drama. We don't know any. We don't need any dying there. Yep. That's what I like in uh, Blind Donut too. That it, it's just small drama things, yeah. like regular life stuff. Yeah. They don't really need more than that. Okay. 
So in terms of the social media accounts, like for a gamer character, it would lend itself perfectly to social media. Does he as a character, what's his real name like in the story? We only ever know him as Dragon Slayer, he right? He doesn't really have a real name, oh, okay. like it's a... Uh, he used it so long time ago, so he doesn't really exist in his okay, real life. he's like an really. avatar of himself, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, does he have social media channels and profiles? Yes, on, on Instagram, it's called uh, The Real Dragon Slayer 666. Okay. And also, he has an account on Facebook okay. with uh, Dragon Slayer 666, and then on YouTube too. Okay, so those three accounts, so I always look at it in like in-world and out-of-world, right? So the out-of-world would be the official like Wiley website or page or whatever. And the in-world would definitely be the real Dragon Slayer Instagram page and stuff like that. Um, so who is responsible for the social media, like for him as a character? Is that down to you? Yeah, I'm the chief manager, okay. if, you, if you may say, but I have a team there, like okay. really helpful team that is really following the time. I mean, I used to do YouTube videos five years ago, and it has changed a lot. Yeah. Like the way you do a video vlog, the structure, what you are supposed to say there. Mm -hmm. I've lost it already. Oh, I mean, no, I'm really? really out of it. So, really? Yeah, yeah. So it's good that we have this professional team of young, young soul, young-minded souls okay. uh, that uh, really can help me with that. How do you think it's changed? I mean, every day it's changing, and... But do you mean, like, the dynamics of the videos on YouTube have definitely, changed? Definitely, yeah, yeah, okay. and it's, uh, like, every YouTuber brings something new to it, yeah. and they adapt to at that, and they make video responses, and it's really, like, a challenging thing to know what's happening on YouTube, because yeah. every year it's different. So in terms of your team, you spoke about your team, like, how many did you bring to the table, and how many did YLE then give you? Uh, you mean the team, what, how many they gave me? or? Yeah, so how many, was it just you oh, yeah. at the beginning? It was just me and then Wiley found these uh, spectacular kids on this team. Okay. And I, I, I can't really say kids because they are 25 year old or so. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I mean, uh, they had a lot of ideas. Okay. Uh, mainly for the YouTube marketing, mm -hmm. not really on the show. Because mm -hmm. I didn't want to make the show about YouTube or social me media too much, because mm -hmm. I think youngsters have have had it enough in their lives. Like everybody's so frustrating, just like having their iPhones and scrolling stuff. Yeah. So I I wanted to make something different, something mm -hmm. elevating, mm -hmm. to have this nerd story in in a nice picture, or nice frame. Uh, so. So when you've got a lot of people given to you on a team, and you said like they have loads of ideas. You, you as the like, writer and creator need to be really clear like what is canon, what isn't canon, what can come in, what would completely put the audience off. Definitely, yeah. And I have to admit, I, I was really afraid because the marketing came first. So oh, okay. if the character is not as it's supposed to be yeah. in the marketing videos, it can really destroy the series. Yes. But uh, we were really specific with that one and um, like had a long meetings of what would Dragon Slayer say and what would he not say and yeah. and he's like really confident, mm -hmm. arrogant even, mm -hmm. but never hateful. Yeah, I mean he's always on the weakest side, and the riskiest thing is that this social media account sometimes he's like commenting on other YouTubers. Mm -hmm saying some hateful stuff like, oh, come on, you're a clown, you don't really know how to play, and stuff like that. Yeah. But it's, it's never personal. Okay. And that's, I've, I've been really strict with the line, like, mm -hmm. never cross the line, never insult yeah. some real person. Yeah. So I know that sometimes, like, on a transmedia production, there's almost like a uh, transmedia Bible, right, that gets all of the team on the same page. Did you develop anything like that? There is a... Uh, format Bible, mm -hmm. yes, because the, the uh, series is sold by Wiley Sales, mm -hmm. and they're selling their ready-made um, remake rights and also the format, and the format includes the transmedia and the strategies there and the, and the different uh, contents for different platforms. Okay, okay. So in terms of the Donna story, I am assuming... Yes, of course. Where's the magic cube? 
Um, I'm just curious, how do you, um, you talked about the social media and the series complementing each other. And um, as a writer, how do you um, help the team navigate so that it's not cheapening it, but like it's a hard tone to strike because we have a time when everybody wants all of this instant content, but it can make it, especially if you want to make a feature film someday, like you, you talk about wanting to elevate the story. So can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been a struggle for me because, uh, I mean, controlling YouTube videos, it's really hard. And in filmmaking, I'm a perfectionist. I want to really have everything in small detail done well. And so on, on YouTube videos, I just sometimes you have to let go and, and live with the moment on, and also learn uh, from mistakes. Uh, it's a really different thing. And I, I think the di uh, different thing, thing is also liberating. Since it's not included on the show, I don't have to stress about it that much. Every video, we have a feedback, we can learn for, from that and change strategies. So, I, I mean, when we had the first video on YouTube, we had a list how to do it. And after, after the first one, we changed the list. And after the third one, we changed the list again. And then we have a lot of meetings discussing what should we do, what, what we should not do. But taking risks and trying on YouTube is really important. I think that when you're writing the series, um, it is a really difficult challenge to know what's uh, trying to please the audience too much by, for example, talking about his YouTube channel or, or when is it focused enough on the drama itself and the characters themselves and not on the marketing. And I think uh, here it's been good that I'm only in film and TV and not in transmedia, so I can say, okay, leave the transmedia to the transmedia <laughs> so that, that the, the series can stand on its own because I don't know anything about the transmedia, so it's good that somebody who does know does that part and, and Alex is involved with both so, so that the characters stay real to themselves, but that in the writing of the series, because if I'm producing the series, I I don't pretend to produce transmedia series because I'm not a transmedia producer. I'm producing a TV series. So I'm also always saying to Alexi, like, I'm not sure if this and this needs to be here because transmedia can, can tell that as well. Thank you. Did that help? Good question. Is there any more questions? At the back. There was two. Okay, maybe no, go this no. side first. No. Yeah, yeah, sure, and then we'll go to you. Hi. Uh, I have a question about the audience for Dragon Slayer. Um, you use uh, Counter-Strike as a game in the series, and can you tell me how that translates to uh, the audience? So are most of the uh, people watching also Counter-Strike players, or do people who play other games also watch the, the series? Uh, yeah, I try to make it as universal as possible. Uh, in the show, it's about Counter-Strike, but we don't really emphasize that much in that game. So it's mainly about team games. If you, if you play any game that's involving team uh, playing, then I guess it's uh, rela relatable. And in our test audience, we had even hockey players and, and they could relate. <laughs> All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> Question over here. You have to have the cube. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, would you build your story a different way if it wasn't shot for YouTube? I mean, uh, do you behave as a director different from the beginning when, you, when your target is YouTube? And uh, yeah, that's, that's the question. Uh, definitely, and that was a big question when I was editing the show. Uh, I had a really good editor called Hanna Kurilahti. And you know, I have this YouTube background, so I was always telling her, no, this has to be more fast-paced. Things has to be f uh, happening faster. Like, the audience will lose their attention. And she said, like, no, trust that the character and the story will, uh, will carry the audience through the film, through the, the series. So I, I trusted her uh, by thinking that, yeah, probably slowing down is what the young audience needs. 
and when it's a YLE show, I don't have to obey the YouTube rules of story structuring. So I think I could have ruined the show if it was too fast paced. So it's important to have not too long, of course, but not too short either, because people need time to emphasize with the character. Is there user generated content around the show? Sorry? User generated content? User generated. So, like, are the fans making stuff and uploading it? Oh, we, uh, mainly memes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you. I wonder if we might just show the next clip, please. And maybe the other one for Donna, please. Thank you. Nyt valo vaihtuu. Nyt, nyt eteenpäin. Noin, hyvä, hyvä. Ja nyt, nyt nyt varovasti. Tässä on aika epätasainen tämä kiva. Anteeksi, mä olen menossa tonne suuntaan. Kiitos. Rakastunut. Vihdoinkin. Voisiko noiden sänkyjen paikkoista vaihtaa? Kun ethän sä enää tarvitse pari sänkyä. Mä haluun seksi. Ihan vaan seksi. Onnistuisko mitenkään? Ei. Sulla on munat kuitenkin ihan kunnossa. Mä haluun panna sua. Onks mä saada samalla nimmanin? Mä pikkuveljelle. Tulkaa kattoo kaikki täällä on vittu! Niinhän se tuli. Kannattiko seivata? Kannattiko? Mitä mä sanon? Hei Donna. Herman, niin. Jossain on sullekin se oikea mies. Näkis vaan. Thank you. So, I would assume that, of course, that Donna, being blind, does not use social media. Is that correct? As a character? What you mean they use social media? Of course but they like, use. Yeah. But she's blind, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah, she's using all the time. Well, they do. Yeah, she's really? in, she's time, in Tinder. Yeah. Okay. Well, like many blind uh, pe people are. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm thinking, like, your audience is quite wide, right? Because you've got, a, like, a great romantic comedy, really. Mm. You've got some really strong themes in there of love and family and mm. those things, too. But also, you've got a story that I would imagine blind people would love 
kind of because of the way she is as a character. But how how could you ever reach them? I mean, you say they're on social media. I have no idea how that could work. Yeah, actually, <laughs> they are our, our audience too. Of course, they, yeah. They are watching films. They are watching TV they series. They say they are watching They say films. that they are watching, but of course they are hear, and, and hearing, really? listening. But, uh, and they know all, all the actors by their voices. Yeah. It's really it was scary. Really? They, they kind of... Oh my God, I had no idea. Yeah. Yeah. Is that just me or would you guys be surprised at that too, right? Because you're creating television series about a blind character, which will be really appealing to a blind community because of she's quite empowering, isn't she, with her attitude? Yeah, yeah it, it, it was also very educating for us when we were doing the research that uh, we find out many things uh, which we didn't know. Yeah. Uh, we met, met uh, marvelous, marvelous characters so what kinds <laughs> doing of things whatever did you, they wanted. So what sort of things did you find out? That must have been amazing research. Yeah, yes. Uh, actually, uh, one, one uh, young woman helped us giving, giving facts and uh, she, she, she had different hobbies. She was playing guitar. Uh, she was doing uh, lights in the, in the theater. Really? Yes. Uh, light and designer. Light designer. Uh -huh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it's, it was an uh, amateur group, but of course. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, and Olympic uh, athlete. She, she was Olympic athlete. Olympic as a, athlete. As a, uh, <coughs> studying uh, kind of coding. Studying coding. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what what she's really? doing. She, she's doing now. Yeah. So, world is open. That's amazing. Uh, these devices they really make all the difference these days. That's and these cool. are, as you know, they are highly customizable. They they can, you yeah. know, use them how how they want. So. So how do your audience or your fans find the series? Our, our, our audience. How do they find the series? How do they know it's there? What's the marketing plan? Well, What's the distribution uh, ideas? Are uh, you on social media? This is not really our department, this marketing, but... Uh, Whose department uh, is it? One, one, I think one marketing strategy was that Let's not use our faces with marketing. <laughs> and that's our a clever marketing, marketing uh, strategy. Yes. Uh, uh, our, our main characters, they've been uh, out there. They've been uh, the actresses and yeah, everybody, talking about not us really that much. Okay, what well, your acting cast have yeah, been Yeah, there. yeah, yeah. Yes. And what kinds of things have they been doing? Well, normal things. PR. Okay. Giving interviews and uh, giving the given the face of this series. Okay. And have you found a, a, a fan base around blind communities? Is that what's happening? Yeah, that's, that's what is happening. It's, uh, I think the community of, of blind people is very aware about this. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's also, um, uh, I don't know the word, kuvailu tulkkaus. For impairment, they have this uh, new, new uh, interpretation. interpretation. Yeah, well, yeah so kind of describing so what's happening. And yeah. yeah. Okay. They're dis uh, and uh, it's available now, okay. so they can actually see the f see the series. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I want to ask a question to your producer, if that's okay. But do you mind if I do that? If I ask you a question? Yeah. Okay. She's bringing the cube down to you. Um, in terms of looking at who the audience are. Like, you came into the project, what, three years ago or something? Yeah. Have you had any thoughts around that? Like, did you have any thoughts around that as you were helping to develop the series about how to reach the audience? Yeah, some, some points, uh, because um, to begin with, to have a main character being a blinded, is something that refers to social problems yeah. or something that uh, it's not uh, to do with comics. So um, I was very much in favor on, on that uh, our casting would be kind of a promise of a comedy. Mm -hmm. So there are certain stars which uh, people can rely on that this is gonna be a funny series. Yeah. And um, mm, also uh, being, uh, well living Nowadays, with all those me too things, etc. 
so uh, uh, for me it was very important that uh, our main character and her friend, that they are friends, that the female friendship is something very strong there. And uh, so I believe that we, we succeeded pretty well uh, with the, the young, younger female audience because in uh, the video on demand site on, on YLE, it was a huge success uh, uh, being, uh, well, actually the marketing was done by Ule and it was supposed to be a phenomenon. But uh, there was the Christmas time and, and the holidays, etc. So this didn't happen so much. Uh, but um, uh, it was published uh, at once, uh, 6th of January. And uh, in, in two weeks, we had reached all the, the goals with the, the amount of people watching it. Now, a new thing which is interesting, and I don't know uh, what's, what it is going to uh, uh, Im impact and influence on, on our industry, is that uh, there is a pilot now made uh, about virtual re reality, meaning that uh, people can try what would it, how would it be, how would it feel to be a blind in a party. Mm -hmm. So um, it's uh, 360 uh, um, audio uh, pictures, but you can also use uh, your mobile phone and take pictures as, as you are not a blinded, but to have the experience how to orientate in different places. And uh, this is something I think perfect for a public broadcaster that you can also uh, offer uh, an experience like that, so that we can start to uh, understand each other better. Oh, that's a really good idea. Are you saying that the virtual reality thing is something that will happen? Like, are no, you no, no, we have a pilot on that. Really? We have al already tested it. Uh, we don't know yet if it goes to production, uh, but that's something that, of course, could be used uh, remakes everywhere. Yeah. And does it tie into Donna's world? Yeah. It's the same, so it's yeah. like an extension of the series. Yes. That you literally are in Donna's shoes. Yes. Right. And actually our big plan is that if we get the second season done, uh, so we will make the production of the virtual uh, reality at the same time because, uh, because of all those logistics to make, yeah. uh, make it happen. Yeah the same voices of actors, etc. Yeah, so there'll be no visual at all, will there? There is the possibility for us who are not blindies that uh, when I hear something behind me, then I can turn my mobile and take a photo and see what's going on there. So the idea is now that in the production of the virtual uh, reality thing, there would be uh, some kind of a uh, uh, clue like, uh, a plot like that, you should find uh, your or lipstick. Let's say something that uh, you try to find hints from different voices and, and uh, audio uh, pictures, what's going on. Yeah. So basically you'd use the same set for the shoot, yes. for the series to But then make extra to make, uh, make the virtual really reality idea. happen. So um, in terms of who the audience are for that, I mean, you've introduced Donna to the world, right? Um, and it, Obviously, I think is a very nice step then with the season two to actually let people step into her shoes and experience life as that. Um, but I mean, I was surprised when you guys said that blind people are on social media. Maybe that's me being naive, but because it's such a visual, like um, you were saying about people scrolling through, right? It's a very visual yeah, thing. But some of them even use Tinder. How do they know who they're swiping? That could be a disaster. <laughs> uh, it, Tinder, it's usually is. Really? Is it? <laughs> no difference there. That's mad. I had no idea that that would be a thing. Um, so find it, for me, like finding the audience, right? So like, do you have, are you using audio as well, like from the series to, and I know you say that that's not your department, like for the marketing and distribution, but for me it would be a natural um, choice, right? Because she's very comedic and there's these crazy moments and she's very direct, you know, with what she says, like, I want to bang you and stuff. Is there a use of simply just audio 
for people that can't see it? Or is that a question for you? Well, actually, the whole series is now uh, translated for blindies. Yeah, it, it's a, oh, yeah, really? it's a so visual in, uh, interpretation they, they hear. Okay. It's, uh, you so know, the I think it, it, you have that also in Germany. You has, have to have that possibility. So when you say the series is translated for blindies, I feel bad saying blindies. Is that actually a thing, though? That's okay to say, blindies. It's okay. Okay, it feels kind of weird. Um, so it's translated, I can't say it, for blind people. <laughs> you don't feel right to say blindies. Um, so how is that found? Like, is that something Wiley are behind? Are they pushing that? I'll ask you that. Yes, they want to offer a certain series for blind people mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, so the, the <laughs> it sounds okay when you say it it's just me saying it <laughs> and so and the uh, actually it goes so that um, the the voices of the actors stay the dialogue stay yeah. music effects they stay but uh, in addition there is uh, a voice telling that what is happening in the picture and okay. and uh, it's done really well that Donna seems to be disappointed, or now a man comes to the room, something that uh, they have to select what is essential in the picture, what mm -hmm. has to be known. Yeah. Uh, but it's very nicely done, and of course the, the, the society of, of the blind uh, people find it very, very uh, important for them. Okay. And also our uh, uh, actor of short stature, <laughs> he is now a, a star among uh, the short statue people. Oh, really? That they find it so so uh, delightful that uh, they can see somebody like them yeah. uh, acti having a romance with yeah. a very nice girl. Yes, but one, one of my best moments uh, making this series was when we had a reading rehearsal, mm -hmm. and we have invited uh, some some of our, you know known blindies to that uh, occasion and, and we read three, three episodes and I was so relieved, relieved because they were laughing all the time. <laughs> <laughs> they really liked, yeah. liked the script. Yeah, great, great. I mean, in a way, like you've said like the, the short guy, I don't know what to call him either. You've got Donna's character, you've got the dragon slayer character. It's all very character led and there are three characters really even with those three who are quite, I mean, they're not unconventional, but for watching TV series, they are. But they're all quite adorable in their same way. I mean, like Dragon Slayer at the beginning, the way he talks to his mum, like, he's like, fuck you, and you ruined my life. And you're like, yeah, go on. Like, if that was my kid, I'd give him a slap, right? But um, you can't help but kind of feeling for him as well. That on all of the characters across, the, you know, the two series, you've got a way that you've told the story that, you don't feel pity for them, or you don't feel sorry for them, but you're kind of, you're on their side and you want them to kind of win and come through the other way. So, I mean, in terms of like your gamer character, how much research did you do to just get that balance right? Because you said like nobody wants to play with a jerk, right? Yeah. But yeah, he kind of is a bit of a jerk too, but it's just so much his life and, and then he's not. So how did you get that balance? Well, uh do you guys know the TV show called Dr. House? Someone rem remembers it? He's an asshole, but he has uh, like a disability with his leg. So I thought that a character can, can be even like very asshole <laughs> if he has some weakness. Yeah. And there has to be some weakness the audience can emphasize with. Yeah. And in Dragon Slayer case, we see he's a lonely guy. Yeah. Like, uh, Deep inside, he really needs friends, yeah. acceptance, but he don't, he's not getting it at all. Yeah. So we kind of forgive the ruthness he has. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, Donald Trump, I mean, who likes him? Nobody. <laughs> I, and I think that um, there was a few versions where we kind of lost the empathy for the main character. And we were thinking, okay, what scenes did you take out? Because First we liked him, and now you read, we read this version, oh, yeah. and we don't like him, and we realize that okay, he can also be an asshole when defending his friends. So actually, in the episodes, there's a couple of um, moments where 
him being an asshole to somebody is actually in defense of a weaker person. So, so it's kind of okay, It's right? kind of okay, yeah. so you understand that he has empathy yeah. for, for, because he himself has been bullied. Yeah. So when he sees somebody else being bullied, he, yeah. he will speak up. <laughs> yeah, it's lovely, it's, it's nicely written, because even like Mega Man 2, right? I feel kind of a fondness for him, and he's there with his guitar singing his song, like, and they're just complete geeks, but you just really like them. Like, you want them to win, don't you? Um, and in terms of Donna's weakness, her weakness isn't really her inability to see, is it, at all? What would you say her weakness is, that she's looking for love? Uh, yeah, actually, it was said already that uh, she overestimates her abilities all the time. And uh, yeah. you, you know, these kind of things, the weakness and, and the, you know, these kind of things, are, it's very basic when you write comedy. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm challenging you again that there's no secrets, like in our provo <laughs> yeah. provocative uh, title there. Uh, we just uh, take the elements uh, of, of the convention. Of course, we play, you know, with the corny elements of uh, romantic uh, comedy genre, and we play with them. Yeah. And we try to make them raunchy, and we, we, we try to make them uh, fresh. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's all we, we, we have done. You say there's that, though, but... There's nothing, nothing new in that. There's not, but I think you've been doing it for a long time, have you? Yeah. Yeah, see, so you say, oh, like, there's nothing new, but there are some things that I think maybe you accept as normal that actually you've done really, really well because you've been doing it for a long time. Have you written, like, romantic comedy stories before? Like, is that your thing, to write that kind of story? Uh, no, not me. Have you? You have. Not exactly romantic comedies, comedies, yes, like yeah. 20 years, but uh, but uh, I, I think as uh, you know, in uh, in Nordic countries and in Finland, uh, we have this thing called peaceful democracy, for the most part, uh, and also gender equality, and that's good, but that's for comedy writers, that's poison. I mean, <laughs> a girl in Finland, of course, in here too, can go to a bar and, and tell somebody that I want to fuck you. There's nothing really. Yeah. Um, but in some, uh, <coughs> if, if it's a blind person, then we kind of, it's a yeah. new gear. Like, we have to invent something, some obstacles. That's true, yeah. It's another layer to it, right? Yeah, but of, but of course, I, I, in I, some other cultures, as we know, uh, it, it may be there's... Uh, it's different, <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. maybe uh, I don't know if they accept like in, in Asia or whatever. Yeah, if yeah. they accept this main character or, or just buy buy this by the series <laughs> because yeah. of this. Yeah, hoping hoping that uh, pe people in in Arabic or Latin American countries will buy this. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> they're all very beautifully written characters. I've got to say that's the thing that really did stand out for me. Um, we have about five minutes for some questions, if anyone has any questions. Yes, down the front. Well, I don't know, but it's nice to hold. I have a question for the producer. When you said you reached your goals after one week, what was your goal? How many clicks is your goal? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> The goal uh, which uh, Wiley set up for us was to have, um, as an average, uh, 50,000 viewers per episode. And did you do that? Yes, in, in about uh, two or three weeks. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so we still have time to... Small in Finland. Yes, yes and, and we should have reached that uh, by the end of March, and we are now in February, and we have doubled the, the goals. But there's some ex exceptional thing happened to this series that it's sold in Norway as the first Finnish comedy series. <laughs> 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 I have a question. Because you mentioned about the, uh, the aim of, of your audience. Can I ask uh, who are the top three largest group of audience in your aim? This is the first question. The second one, uh, is it possible for me to ask you some funding, question about funding? Uh, is your, I mean, 
supported by the government or the foundation or something like that. Could you yeah, please no share questions. a little bit? I don't remember <laughs> that. Yes, the, the uh, focus audience number one was uh, a female uh, audience around uh, 2030. That was kind of the focus audience that we should reach. If we reach them, uh, we will know that we will get the data analysis by the end of February. So we will have all the statistics uh, about the uh, traditional years uh, in television, broadcasting television, but also the, the, the hits and viewings in the Vod, uh, 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 Ule Arena video on demand where they can watch it. We will know that by the end of February Unfortunately, we don't have the facts yet. And about the uh, fin funding, uh, the financial thing is that the main financier was YLE, the broadcasting company. We also got support from Finnish Film Foundation, which does support also drama series, not only uh, feature films. Uh, and then we got some money from Norway uh, as pre-sales. And because of that, we were able to apply for money from Nordic uh, Film and Television Fund, where you need to have uh, at least two uh, Nordic countries there. Uh, so um, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> we got the money there. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Okay. Um, so finally, my question is, if these guys want to watch both of your shows, how can they do that? Where can they find it? Do they have to go to the Wiley site to find it? How can they watch Donna and Dragon Slayer? I don't know if it's possible. They have their streaming service, Wiley, but I don't know if, I think you can't. Okay. You have to buy it. <laughs> you can, did you say? Oh really, did you? How did you find it? Like, where did you find it? So you okay. went to Great. I'm sorry. So you went I just wanted Wiley. to tell you that you can watch it in Germany and Wiley's uh, arena. Yeah. Okay. So what URL did you put in to find it? Sorry. Which? What did you put in? Like the website that you put in? Wiley Arena. Oh well, there you go. That's easy. Thank you. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are only in Finnish and this blinded translation. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh. But okay. that's in Finnish okay. too. Of course, we have them translated, and Ule Sales is trying to to sell it to to Germany too. I hope so. Okay. Great. And how about Dragon Slayer? Do you know where people can find that? Same thing. You can find all the episodes in Wiley Arena, but without subtitles. And um, uh, we have a screening tomorrow at the European Film Market. Otherwise, the same thing, trying to sell it to the broadcaster near you. <laughs> so now one of the things that Scam did, they found that a lot of their audiences were uploading to Google Drive and writing in the, the translated subtitles, which is one of the reasons it just went so crazy, that the fans were allowed to get their hands on it and upload it to, to Google Drive. Don't tell why I lay that bit. Okay, thank you all so much. Thank you for your questions. Thank you to you and guys. If you, if you want to see more of Donna, you can... Uh, Visit uh, two palace three tomorrow at 12.30. We have screening there. Oh, there you go. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.